Welcome geometry students to class today on this Tuesday, March the 4th. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope you're ready to learn some math today. And even though my voice is just a little bit away from normal, I really <clears throat> feel like I've got most of my voice back. So I'm really thankful for that. It was a long three or four weeks there. I think I've finally hopefully shaken this thing that I had. Um, Lord willing, as long as all goes as planned, I look forward to seeing you guys this Friday. I know that you do not look forward to seeing me because whenever you see me, that usually means there's a test. But there will be a test this Friday, which means there'll be a review sheet Thursday. So keep all of that in mind. Please study. Please, please, please study. Go over your notes. Go over your material. Don't wait until Thursday night. Make sure you understand these formulas. Make sure you know what each variable stands for. And make sure you're really ready for this test. Um, you owe me homework from yesterday. It was actually two assignments. Remember, two little assignments. I guess I could quickly try to pull that up. Um, if this thing was working here. <clears throat> right here, page 503, 527 through 32, page 503, 6, and 11 through 13. So those were um, given to you yesterday. They're due today. So please turn those in now at this time. And then here's a list of makeup items. Jay says, if I'm annoying you, I apologize. And I guess if you want me to quit doing this, you just email me. I, there's no pressure. I'm just trying to let you know so there's no confusion later. Well, Mr. Earhart, I didn't know, or I thought, you know, I just put everything on the table. Um, Jace, if I'm wrong on any of these, please let me know. I have down you and me these three assignments, two quizzes. Now it's one quiz. I told you I would just cross the one off. Now, Jason and Zoo, you both are missing the same quiz from this past Friday. I'm not going to let you guys skip it per se, but if you want your test that you're going to take this Friday, replace your quiz. That's fine. I just need email and communication from you, okay? And then um, <clears throat> on your Chapter 8 test, Jason, I need to know what day you're going to take it, what teacher you're going to take it from, et cetera, et cetera, what hour, all of that. Um, if I can help you there, please let me know, okay? And that's basically it. So um, there we go. Please contact me with any questions um, that you have, and let's go ahead and continue on um, with what's going on. Test on Friday. Please turn in homework. Here we go. Grab your notebooks, pens, pencils, calculators, and books. Let me get a drink here, and let's get started. <clears throat> We are going to continue our studies into volume. Now, don't forget, we started off the chapter dealing with what? Surface area. And we have now transitioned over into volume. Okay? So don't confuse the two. Surface area is the area on the outside of the surface. Volume is how much space is on the inside of a three um, dimensional or we call it a solid so the amount of space inside of a solid on Friday we learned how to find the volume of cylinders and prisms okay and then on Monday we worked on homework that was yesterday yesterday we worked on homework reviewing that material okay volume of cylinders volume of prisms. Make sure you're familiar with those formulas on the test this Friday. I will not make you memorize them. I will have them on a sheet of paper for you. However, I will not have them labeled um, as to what each formula is. You'll have to recognize a formula and know what solid it goes to. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now today we will be learning how to find the volume of two more solids, pyramids and cones. Okay, so today we're going to learn how to find the volume of pyramids and cones, okay? Volume of pyramids and cones. Go ahead and write this down. Your heading today is volume of pyramids and cones. The lesson number is 9.5 and the date today. If you'd like to keep track of that, and I encourage you to do so. <clears throat> the date today is March 4th, 2014 volume of pyramids and cones. Now, list, you take as much notes as you want to, as, as many notes as you think that you need, but please listen carefully. And if I were you, I would take tons of notes. Please don't be confused. Look at these four formulas carefully. Are you ready? We learned earlier how to find the surface area of a pyramid. This formula should look familiar. Remember what B, capital B stands for? Area of the base. Do you remember what capital P stands for? 
perimeter of the base. This is really a cursive L here, but I couldn't find that on my computer. Do you remember what a cursive L stands for? Slant height. Not the height going straight up and down, but the slant height. We learned earlier in this chapter how to find the surface area of cones. This formula should look familiar. Capital B, area of base. Pi, 3.14. R, radius. Cursive L here, slant height. Slant height. Okay? So these formulas here should look familiar. Please don't confuse these two formulas with what? With volume. This is the formula for surface area of a pyramid. This is the formula for surface area of a cone. We've learned that earlier. Now today, you need to write this down for sure. Here's the new notes. Today we're going to learn how to find the volume of a pyramid. And today we're going to learn how to find the volume of a cone. Do you notice anything about these two formulas? <laughs> if you're observant, I hopefully you notice they're identical, okay? So, um, on your test on Friday when I give you the formula sheet I'll just have this formula written down one time and you'll need to know that that goes for um, two different two different solids if you want to find the volume of a pyramid and the volume of a cone you use the same formula it's one-third one-third times the area of the base times the height and of course if it's not a L just an H that means the height going straight up and down not the slant height all right. So these are the two formulas. Or really, it's one formula. These are the formulas we will use today. <clears throat> I would like to make a very important uh, uh, point very quickly about the volume of the four solids we have studied so far. You're going to find this very interesting. Remember, we have learned, um, well, first of all, notice that for two solids, the formula is the same. And for the other, for the other two solids, the formulas are the same. Look at this. Look at that. Remember on Friday we learned how to find the volume of a cylinder and prism? And what was the formula for both of those? Area of base times the height equals volume. And then today we just learned in order to find the volume of a pyramid and a cone, it's one-third times the area of the base times the height. Volume. So really you're not learning a lot of formulas, guys. These two solids have the exact same formula when it comes to volume. These two solids have the exact same formula when it comes to volume. Pretty simple, okay? All right, let's go ahead and get started. I believe we're doing one, two, three problems, and then homework. I don't believe in teaching a long time when I don't need to, okay? And if I don't need to, I would rather teach a short amount of time, excuse me, <clears throat> and have you work on the homework and get practice, okay? So, in your notes, if you would, I would write down, instead of trying to draw this picture, just write in your notes, page 510, example 1A, so you know where this problem came from, and then put find the volume. And we're going to find the volume of this pyramid. Well, when you're asked to find the volume of a pyramid, you should right away realize we're going to use volume equals one-third times the area of the base times the height. So let's go ahead and realize, let's go ahead and see what we're missing. We know that one-third is one-third. We do not know the area of the base. We'll have to find that. And we do know the height. The height is not the, now remember, if you were to be on the top of this pyramid, here I go again with my wonderful artistic skills that I don't have, and you were to lower a rope down the side of the pyramid like this, to a friend down below who could then grab the rope. We'll call it a rope ladder and you can climb up the pyramid. That's called the slant height. It's on the outside going down the side, okay? But whenever the height is going straight up and down like this right here, that is the actual height of the pyramid, okay? So we do know the height and it is six, all right? Now, the area of the base is pretty simple, students. I mean, if you'll look at the base, I'm going to highlight it for you. It's obvious we have a rectangle. It's a 5 by 4 rectangle, 5 feet by 4 feet. And we know how to find the area of a rectangle. It's 5 times 4. So the area of the base is 20. And now, students, I mean, with that in mind, this is really pretty simple. What With the calculator, or if you're good with numbers, you can do it in your head. 1 third times 20 times 6 does give you 40. Now remember we're finding volume so it's feet cubed or cubic feet. 
there we go look at that pretty simple so one-third times 20 times 6 okay all right this is not going to be a super long video you should have a lot of time to work on your homework today which I'm happy and by the way if you finish your homework excuse me <coughs> if you finish your homework um, and the video, I would work on some of your incompletes if some of you are missing some things, okay? All right, let me grab a drink here. I would write in your notes, page 510, example 1B, let's find the volume. Again, same formula, volume of a pyramid. Volume of a pyramid is one-third times the area of the base times the height. Now, we know the height. They've given it to you right here. I know it's not super easy to see, but there it is, okay? If you'll look in your book, you'll see that's eight, eight meters, okay? And so we do know the height. I'm going to put one-third because one-third is one-third. I'm going to put a parenthesis for my base, area of base, and the height is eight. There we go. Now let's find the area of the base. Students, listen, you cannot find the area of the base until you know what the base is. I mean, is your base a circle? Is it a square? Is it a rectangle? Is it a triangle? Is it a trapezoid? Is it a parallelogram? Look, you have to first decide what your base looks like, and then you can find the area of it. Now, I know this triangle doesn't look like a right triangle, but that's because they're trying to give this solid depth. But you see that right angle symbol right there? Well, that means that the area, excuse me, that means that the base is a right triangle, like this. And this length right here is 7. And this length right here going back is 6. Now, I'm not being mean, but either you remember how to find the area of a triangle or you don't, and I hope that you do. It's one half times the base times the height. Well, the base would be a seven, and the height would be a six, and so we should get 21. If you multiply those together, you will get 21. So the area of the base is 21. So now this is actually a pretty simple problem. Again, I mean, as long as you know what the variables stand for in the formula and you understand how to use a calculator or multiply numbers, um, this is not too hard. One third times 21 times 8 will give you 56 cubic meters. It's not square because we're not finding the area or the surface area. We're finding <clears throat> the volume. So the volume of this pyramid is one third, excuse me, 56 meters cubed. One more and we're done for the day. Now let's find the volume of a cone. The volume of a cone. Well, I showed you earlier the formulas are the same for the volume of a cone and also for the volume of a pyramid. And the formula is one third times the area of the base times the height. Now when you look at this we can see right away we do not know the area of the base. However we do know the height and the height is 12. Okay, 12. Now I want to show you something real quick I really feel like you need to see. Pretend for a second I did not give you this height. Pretend for a second I gave you the slant height going down. Okay, pretend that was 12 and then we know this is 8, you would then have to find the height on your own. And you could do that because, look, you have really, what you have here is a right triangle. I'm going to cut it out for you. You have a right triangle right there. And we would say this length right here is 12, this length right here is 8, and then you could find this missing leg by using Pythagorean's theorem. So do understand that would be a very fair problem to throw at you, okay? But in this case, it did not happen. We do know what the height is, and the height right here is 12. Now all that we have to do is find the area of the base and put it right here. Well, again, you cannot find the area of the base until you know what shape you have. Well, it looks like to me we have a circle. We have a circle for the base. How do you find the area of a circle? Well, hopefully you remember. It's pi r squared. So for pi, <coughs> excuse me, for pi we're going to substitute 3.14. For my radius I'm going to substitute 8. 
8 squared and now we're all set. We know that 8 times 8 is 64 and then we take 64 times 3.14 and the area of the base you should get if you typed it in correctly or hopefully I typed it in correctly you should get 200.96. So now we just simply take one-third times 200.96 times 12 and let's see what we get. Should get 803 0.84 and we're dealing with volume so that's cubic centimeters. Now I would love to take some time we just don't have time to and plus this is a, a good solid geometry class but it's not an advanced geometry class. It's not a track one geometry class but I would love to take a you know try to draw a rectangular prism around a cone and I'm not, I just can't do it. I'm not an artist, but then show you how the cone is one third the volume of the cube itself. Um, there's ways we could do that in class with visuals. If I was there, I could do that for you. Same thing with the pyramid. If I could finish off drawing like a cube, and again, I just don't have those drawing skills, I could show you how a pyramid is one third the volume of a cube, and that's why we take one third times the area of the base times the height. One third times the area of the base times the height. But instead of getting into that, the main thing I want to nail home today is you need to know how to find the volume of pyramids and cones. And this is the form that you need right here. And please don't confuse that with the other formulas you've learned in the past right here. This is the formula for surface area of a pyramid. This is the formula, excuse me, <clears throat> for surface area of a cone. Make sure you understand the difference and see the difference and remember which ones they go to, okay? All right, here's your homework. Please get started on it. Um, I want you working on math, of course, until you're finished. 5 through 7, 12 through 14, 17 through 19. That's really not a huge assignment. That's nine problems. That'll keep you busy for a while. Hopefully, it will allow you to practice the problems. If you have any um, questions on your homework, there is a video for you, of course, like usual. Geometry uh, 9.5 homework is the video. Geometry 9.5 homework. And so if you need help on any of the problems, you can watch that video and we'll help you. I hope you guys have a great day. Call or email if you have any questions at all.